Hey, Larry G here. No relation to Kenny. <laughs> I don't think. But, uh, you know, I like to take um, pop or folk tunes. I try to maintain the purity of the song, but I want to add some elements uh, harmonically and so forth that will bring it into a slightly different realm uh, in terms of color and mood and just get out of the straight triadic, triadic feeling without making it too hip and jazzy but adding some emotional color um, so let's talk about just a simple one four five the ubiquitous one four five progression in very basic terms So let's make this progression more emotional, more moody, more interesting. In place of the root, we can always play a ninth, which gives us a cluster, not a cluster, but a, a second. A major or minor second is going to give you tension and or dissonance, which is going to create a different kind of mood. Here's one, four, five now adding uh, ninths to my first two chords. Okay, so here once again on the B flat, um, instead of r doubling my B flat, I just played a ninth and I created another second here. And here I'm going to suspend the, th the, th the four, an age old device. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to sort of change the melody, so to speak. It's, it's not really the melody, it's just, um, it's just that I do like to think melodically when I'm comping, because it just sort of helps the, the logic and the direction and the musicality of, uh, of one's accompaniment. So here's the same idea with ninths, but I'm going to change where, uh, the positioning of them. my nine up an octave. Same suspended device. Here's another way to uh, play an F major nine uh, with a very wide interval. So my ninth is down here, and then between my ninth and my third I have the interval of a ninth. Instead of this, I've moved the A up an octave, and I've got uh, my fifth here, I'm also doubling a fifth here, and on my second chord I've moved my third down here. It's a really open sound, and again it's, I've got some wide intervals here. And my suspended looks like this, this time. You know, having the root of the chord on the bottom gets a little bit boring, so let's discuss some alternatives to that. So let's start this one with the third in the bass, and I'm not going to add a nine, because just putting the third in the bass gives us something uh, different and quite pretty. And gospely and more classical sounding. And then the pull of this third, is, uh, this third in the bass really wants to just go up a half step and we always want some nice stepwise voice leading. Here I am going to use the ninth on the B flat. And let's do our suspended again. different from this. Taking the exact same idea but up an octave gives us a brighter sound which is also quite full. Why? Because of the width of these intervals. An open fifth is always strong and a sixth is always strong. 
Now I'm going to really drop out some notes and just try to stick to three notes here to give it really a more of a choral open sound. That will also work down here quite nice. So we're still dealing with just our basic one four five, but you know, uh, this this adds just some other variation and things that we can do when we get tired of um, elementary things like. Of course, that's appropriate for certain songs and for certain tastes. So I'm not saying it's wrong. We can throw in some other colors now and still have a relatively pure kind of 1-4-5 sound. So what if we went back to our this voicing, but we added a major 7, and again, I'm, I'm always going back to this, but we want to create some tension. Right? Uh, so that's an F major 7. So literally those four notes spread out in, in this way, voiced in this way. Now I'm going to go to my B-flat 9. Resolve to my, my 1 sus, and then resolve that. Okay. So just the introduction of the major 7 gives us something new. And I've got a nice melody. So we always want to think melodically. Let's put something else in the bass here and see where that takes us. So let's try our 1-4-5 starting out in that position. So here I've got open fifths and I've got a fourth resolving to a third. Now in the same spirit I want to Again, start with a, an F chord that's got the third in the bass, and I want to put the major seven somewhere else this time. So in numbers, we're talking three, one, five, major seven. You might have heard this in Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings. So once again, F major 7, B flat 9, C sus. Here's another way to start our F major 7 with the fifth in the bass. Sweet, right? 5, 3, major 7. One. Again. Tension. Dissonance. Okay, what's that? That's our B flat major triad with a nine, except it's voiced like this. And it moved quite well to that because there was very little movement. nice melody we had okay let's take a few more liberties here our opening F is going to be a dominant chord with the third in the bass okay so I started with once again, a six is always going to be a strong sound. Dissonance, fifth, always a strong sound. So one needs to recognize as immediately as possible that they have tones that they can hold over, common tones. This fifth of the F becomes the nine of the B flat. about this uh, this seventh 
Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Abdullah Ibrahim, the South African pianist composer who you should all check out if you like this kind of gospel hymnal sound. The seventh really draws us to the four chord. So. F over C. You can also suspend it again. So there are some variations there. So go forth and use your suspensions and your ninths and your seconds and your dissonances and your thirds and fifths in the bass. Be creative and um, be pure and be real. <laughs>